Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasevic and in this video I will talk about Redis caching in ASP.NET Core Web API. Redis is a powerful solution for efficient and fast data storage and retrieval. With Redis, applications can achieve lightning fast access to frequently used data, enabling millions of requests per second. It combines the best of in-memory caching to increase the performance of data access and reduce the latency and distributed caching to provide scalability and resilience through data replication. That said, if you liked the video, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons. It helps the channel a lot and supports my work here as well. So let's move on with the video. To get started with Redis setup, we need to set up Docker on our machine. As with my videos on RabbitMQ and Mass Transit, which you can find linked in the description below, I will here use the Docker desktop app which is pretty easy to download and install. After having Docker installed, the first step is to set up a Redis server using the Docker command in the command prompt. So let's call the Docker run with the name Redis cache flag to set the name of this container to Redis cache. Also, let's map the host machine's port to Redis container's port with the P 906379 flag. Here, 6379 is the default port for Redis that is mapped to port 90 of the host machine. We can select any available port here. Let's add the D flag to ensure that the container runs in a detached mode, or in other words, in the background. Finally, Redis is the name of the Docker image used to create the container. If the Redis image is not already present, Docker will download it. For me, it is already downloaded and now it is ready. Now that we are done with creating the Redis server, let's execute it. This command launches an interactive shell session with our container. With this done, we can execute specific commands inside the Redis server. And that's it. Now that the Redis server is up and running, Let's set up our application. I already have created the web API application and installed two required libraries. The first package allows us to use caching in the web application. And the second one is a client library that allows us to interact with Redis. At this point, I would like to let you know about our ultimate ASP.NET Core web API book that you can use to master all the best practices to create powerful production ready web APIs. Also, check out our Blazor course to create client C-sharp apps without using JavaScript. The links are in the description below. Now, let's add Redis as our caching provider in our application. To do so, we need to modify the program class. Let's use builder.services property and call the add stack exchange Redis cache method to add Redis caching service in the iService collection. Now, for the options, I will use the configuration property and provide the Redis connection string using the builder.configuration.getConnectionString method with the key as an argument. Also, let's use the options parameter again and this time set the instance name property to games catalog underscore. It is important to note that instance name is an optional property that allows us to prepend a custom instance name to all our cache keys. This is important when we have multiple applications using the same Redis database. It allows us to differentiate between the keys from different instances even if they have the same name. Now, to continue, let's create a connection string, RedisCon, in the app settings JSON file. The port number we specify here must match the port we mapped the Redis server to in the Docker setup. Ok, let's move on to set up some data. In a real world scenario, we'd be using a database such as SQL or any external API as our data source. Here I'll keep it simple and use a static data class to act as our external data source. So let's first create our model class named game. Here. I will need an int id property first. Then let's add the string title property, the string genre property, 
I need another string property named platform. And finally, let's add an int property named release year. Now I can create my fake database class named games db, for example. It will be a static class. And here I will create a single method that returns two games. As simple as that. Now that we have our model class and data file, we can go ahead with mapping the data to the model class. To do that, let's create a service class first named game service. And here I will add two methods. The first one will be a public method that returns a list of games and let's name it load games. And for the implementation, I will simply call the static class and the get all games method. The second one will return only a single game. Let's name it load game and call the same get all games method from the static class. But this time I will also use the single method to extract a single game with the ID of one. That's pretty simple. And with the service ready, I have to register it in the program class. Let's call the builder dot services dot add scoped method to register my service as a scoped one. Now, with the service prepared, I can modify my games controller. Here, let's create a new private read only game service field named game service. And let's use a constructor to inject this service. Now, I need a new get action. And it will simply return an I action result. And I will name it get all games. Inside the action, I will fetch all the games using the game service field and call the load games method. Finally, I will return an OK result with all the games as part of the response body. So this will return all the games from the database and it will do it every time I request a new list of games because I don't have caching in place. That said, let's see how to work with Redis cache here. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a new class named Redis Cache Service. Here I will create a new private read only I distributed cache field named cache and inject it using the dependency injection system with the help of a constructor. With this, I can integrate Redis as the caching solution. To do that, Let's create a new method to get the cached data. I want this method to retrieve cached data of any specified type. So I provide t as a return type. Also, I will name it get cached data of t. And the method accepts a single string key parameter. Now, to retrieve the data from the cache associated with the key, I will use the cache field and call the getString method with the key as an argument. If no such data is present, I will return the default value of the specified type t. On the other hand, I will return the serialized data using the JSON serializer class and the deserialize t method and provide the JSON data as an argument. Next, Let's create a method to store any data in the cache. This method will return void and I will name it set cached data with three parameters key for the identifier of the cache data, the data representing the actual data I want to cache, and cache duration to specify the duration of the cache. Inside the method, I will first set some options using the distributed cache entry options class and setting the absolute expiration relative to now property to the cache duration parameter. After that, I will serialize the data using the JSON serializer class and the serialize method with the data as an argument. Finally, I will use the cache field and call the set string method with the key as the first argument, the JSON data as the second one, 
and the options as the last argument. With this method, I will set a string in the specified cache with the specified key. So that's it regarding the cache service. And now I can get back to my controller. Here I will inject my Redis cache service using constructor injection so I can use it inside the actions. This is a well known process that I did with my game service as well. I will also add one more private bool field named is from cache and set it to false. I will use this one just for all of you to see if I got the data from the cache or not. Now I can modify the action. The first I will do here is create a new instance ID which I will get from my private get instance ID method. Also, I need a cache key and it will be a combination of the game's cache string and the instance ID. Now I can fetch all the games from the cache using the cache service and the get cached data method with the list of games as a generic type parameter. And I have to provide the cache key as an argument. If I get a null as a result, it means I have nothing in the cache with the specified key, so I need to fetch all the games from the database using the game service and the load games method. Only after that, I can use the cache service again, but this time the set cache data method to set a new cache. And I must provide all the required arguments the key, the data, and the duration. In this case, it will be 3 minutes. Since I didn't fetch the data from the cache, I will set the value of is from cache field to false. Otherwise, I fetch the data from the cache, so I will set the same field to true. Lastly, I will modify the response body here and provide a new object with the games property set to games data and the is from cache property set to value of the is from cache field. Now let's generate this missing method and set the string as a return type. Inside the method, let's create a new instance ID variable and use the HTTP context.session property and then the getString method to get a string value with the provided key from a session. If I get an empty string, I will populate the instance ID variable with a new random unique identifier converted to a string. And then I will set that value with the instance ID key inside the session as a string. Finally, I will return the instance ID value. With this, I make sure that even if we launch multiple instances of our application using different web browsers simultaneously, the application assigns a unique ID to each of those instances. Lastly, before I test all of this, I have to revisit the program class one more time and add a few more registrations. First, I need to register services for a session to be used in my app. And also, I will set up some idle timeout to 3 minutes using the time span dot from minutes method. I also have to register my Redis cache service as a scoped service. With all of this prepared, I can test the app. So let's run it. And before I send any request to this endpoint, I will show you how we can inspect the data inside the Redis database. I will call the Redis CLI command to activate the command line for Redis. Now, if I run scan0, you will see that I have nothing stored inside the cache. But now I can use Postman to send a request to my game's endpoint. And you can see the data is not retrieved from the cache. And I can check the Redis cache again. This time we see the game's catalog created. The session middleware uses our registered cache service to store data. As we have registered Redis as our cache service, it automatically starts using Redis for the storage of session data. This is the first key we see when scanning. The second key is the key generated to store our game data in the cache. 
you can also use this command with the key to see how the cache stores the game data. Of course, we have to do all of that within the three minutes because the cache will expire after that. Also, we can check the Postman request again. And after I send the request, I see the data from the cache. Awesome. This looks and works great. Lastly, if we want to manually remove the cache, we can modify our caching service. All I have to do is use the remove method from the cache service with the key provided to remove the cache with the specified key. Nothing more than that. Also, one more important configuration here is to use the sliding expiration. It gets or sets how long a cache entry can be inactive before it will be removed. This will not extend the entry lifetime beyond the absolute expiration. So in our case, the absolute expiration is set to 3 minutes. But if we don't access the cache in a minute, it will expire. But if we do, the sliding expiration will be extended for another minute. Again, not more than 3 in total. With all of this done, I hope you have a clear understanding of how Redis cache works and how you can implement it in your web API applications. Just an advice, always make sure to cache parts of your application that are read heavy and frequently accessed. Data that is updated frequently is not a good choice here as the cache might not hold the most updated data always. That's it, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.